The epilogue. Two months later, Tia smiled at the group of people around the table. She'd met so many wonderful friends over the last few weeks. Cassidy, Jordan's girlfriend, had quickly become one of her closest friends, along with Kara. And because of that, she'd met many of the other firemen sitting around the table. Bubba, Luca, Deacon, and Ivy, the paramedic. There was also her mother, Brody, and his friend Nick, Jordan's brother Graham, and some of the other police officers on Jordan's unit. She'd never had such a great group of friends in her life, and she couldn't believe they had all wanted to celebrate her book release. She had decided not to pursue another publisher, but to self-publish this book because she hadn't wanted a company to demand changes. This was her story, and it needed to be told exactly the way she had written it. Thank you all for coming, Jordan said as he banged his water glass with a spoon to quiet the chatter. As you all know, we have a resident celebrity in our midst. Tia ducked her eyes as heat flared up her cheeks. This was way too much. And she has finally finished her masterpiece. Tia, get up here and show off your beautiful book. Tia shook her head as she pushed back her chair. She loved that they cared enough about her to want to celebrate her accomplishment, but she would have been just as happy to do a small get-together instead of this large party Jordan had thrown for her. However, he was still her boss, and it appeared to make him happy, so she had agreed. She grabbed the bag which held her book and walked to the front of the table. Her cast was gone, and her injuries had healed, except for the scar that still ran across her forehead, but Tia didn't mind. She now considered it a badge of honor, her second chance at life. Thank you all for wanting to celebrate this with me. This wasn't an easy book to write, but your support helped me get past all the hard parts. And while I've loved a lot of books I've written, I think this might be my best. Here, here, Brody said, lifting his glass and flashing her a large smile. What? he asked as he looked around the table. I already read it, so I know that it's good. She got the doctor spot on. She shook her head and smiled at him. Anyway, I think it's because of all of you that it turned out so well. And that's why I'm pleased to present to you. She paused for dramatic effect as she pulled the book out of the bag. The key to remember. Cheers and clapping sounded as Tia passed the book around the table. Hey, this might even be a book you could read, Luca. Bubba teased as he flipped through the pages. Only if it's on audiobook, Luca shot back. I can't sit still long enough to read a proper book. Sorry, Tia. She laughed and shook her head as the teasing comments continued to flow around the table. Brody caught her eye and flashed her a wink, and Tia didn't think she'd ever felt more loved than she did right now. Excuse me. The conversation stilled at the unfamiliar voice, and they all turned to see a petite woman in the doorway. I'm sorry to interrupt, but do any of you know where I can find Matt Parker? Confused glances shot around the room, and Jordan stood to address her. I'm sorry, ma'am. There's no Matt Parker here. Actually, there is. Time seemed to freeze as every eye turned to Bubba as he pushed back his chair and stood. I'm Matt Parker. The End If you want to know what Bubba's story is, be sure to pick up your copy of Never Forget the Past, book number three in the Men of Fire Beach series.